Hi, I'm Jurgi Urrutia, a librarian at Kingston Libraries in Victoria. And this is an Alia graphic special. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about Australian comics at libraries, um, why they're important, what the difficulties are, and most importantly, we'll discuss a couple of great initiatives that have really made a difference and that at Alia Graphic would really like to support to see grow. Uh, so to do this, I have a couple of really special guests uh, that I've been wanting to talk to for a long time. And uh, we have Karen Duarte and Queenie Chan. So to start with, uh, Karen, could you introduce yourself? Uh, you know, what you do, who you are, um, how did you get into comics? Okay, um, yeah, so my name is Karen. I work at Inner West Council Library in Sydney. Um, I am the Library Collections Coordinator, which oversees all of the collections in the libraries, like the print, the digital, and the AV. But I do have a particular passion for graphic novels. Um, I started a little comic festival called Comic Conversation, which I think we're going to talk about later. But um, yeah, I basically got into graphic novels by developing collections for the library. Excellent. That's, that's my and, intro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. And we also have Quinny Chen with us. And uh, same thing, Quinny, uh, you're a manga creator, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, could you please tell us a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, hi everyone, my name is Queenie Chan. I'm originally from Hong Kong and I started drawing when I was 18 and um, published my first uh, manga with a LA based company called Tokyo Pop. Uh, that's called The Dreaming. So after that, I did work as an illustrator for authors like uh, Dean Koontz and Cardi Chan. And uh, after that, I did my own work, including a fairy tale inspired series called Fable Kingdom. So right now, I am um, studying for a PhD at Macquarie University. And I'm doing a series of uh, non-fiction comics uh, that are biographical comics about famous historical queens. So Scholastic is distributing that and I've got three out so far. So next year will be the fourth one. Yeah. So um, this is what I've been doing for a while. And on the side, I've been helping out with comic conversations. So I produce a list of books for libraries to buy for the festival, which we'll also be talking about more so later on. That's excellent. Um... So, um, so I guess the first thing is, um, you know, today mainly we're going to be talking about Australian comics and Australian titles and creators and libraries. So, you know, um, I guess it's kind of a silly question, but I want to put it out there, you know, and see, see, see what, um, what you have to say. So, you know, why Australian comics? Um, and maybe if, if we can start with uh, Karen. Because we buy local authors from every collection so I guess when I started working with Comic Conversation I did realize that a lot of um, local comic creators weren't getting their works into libraries and I was seeing some pretty awesome um, graphic novels that were being produced so yeah I'm really keen to get them into libraries I think it um, broadens the breadth of our collections by having local works and making those connections. Yeah, I think for, for me, it's like that as well, you know, I mean, we're in Australia, so we should have mm. Australian stories, we should have Australian creators. And, Absolutely. and I guess the same thing, I just noticed that when I started to delve into it, that I didn't see a lot of Australian creators um, at the library. And uh, there were Australian mm. creators and titles that I knew that were out there, but were Mm. But I couldn't find them at the libraries, and I and I thought, well, that that needs to be changed. I mean, they're clearly going under the radar, and that that needs to be changed. Um, it was basically the works of, um, you know, like Bruce Moutard or Pat Grant that had major publishers and got reviewed in mainstream press. They kind of made their way into libraries, but the whole world of other graphic novelists that are working. Yeah, it was totally under the radar. I was really surprised. And I guess uh, for me as well, I think sometimes we forget that libraries are part of the book industry uh, as well, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, you know, if, if you support your local creators uh, and, and have them at the library, that's, that's really supporting the creator. Uh, because, you know, people will be reading those books, people will be more aware of them, 
um, you know, if, if the creator actually gets those books into the library, that's actually quite a, quite a bit of sales that, that you'll get, you know, by exactly. getting them into, you know, into the libraries and also especially school libraries. So, for example, you know, like junior and YA books, if you get them into school libraries, um, you know, that's, that's good business. So well, you must that, have found that Queenie, like the dreaming was sort of kind of a standard book in school yeah. libraries. That's that's when I first discovered your work. Yes, um, about that. Uh, of course, it would be a good idea for more Australian creators to be able to get their work into uh, libraries, whether it's school or public libraries. Um, I think the difficulty there has also always been that uh, Australian publishers rarely publish comics. And uh, even when you're talking about them do publishing comics, that's something that's only happened in the past five years on any kind of semi-regular basis. Um, now, comics is hugely popular with anyone under the age of 40, and it kind of makes up half the internet at any point in time. But uh, I think um, most Australian comic book artists, despite this country having a very, very long history of, of comic creation, uh, because of the lack of local publishing opportunities, they have a tendency to jump straight to uh, international publishers. And so their talent is usually more recognised overseas and by overseas publishers than, than by local ones. Um, it's kind of um, created a situation where a lot of Australian uh, creators don't get recognition in Australia unless they've won some kind of award overseas or got picked up by a big overseas publishers and uh, they have to find other means to kind of get their work into this country. Uh, for example, The Dreaming, which was based on a very Australian uh, topic, which is a very, it's a kind of a, a mystery um, horror story based on um, disappearing schoolgirls. That's had a picnic at hanging rock kind of thing to it. So that makes it very Australian. Uh, but that was created for an American publisher who, as last, uh, when it first came out, wasn't really interested in distributing in the Australian market. And I'm glad that it managed to make its way over here. But uh, from what I could tell, it was by no way a coordinated campaign. It was just like somebody found out about it and kind of publicised it, which is a very good thing. And unfortunately, because of the lack of an Australian publisher, uh, there is no, uh, the, the book's out of print now. So there are no publisher for the book. And um, even though there is still a demand for it, because um, I mm. think it's been listed as an educational resource for graphic novels in schools. So uh, there is a market there for this book that is being um, completely neglected because the publisher is still American and they have deemed that this market uninteresting or something. Yes, so uh, that's a very common problem with Australian creators is that uh, if they want to get their work into libraries, there are certain channels that they can um, record or so list their book with, but that doesn't mean that, uh, that particularly if their publishers are from overseas, that they would be interested in supplying the Australian market and letting libraries and schools get their hands on these books. So uh, there's that problem. Um, what part of what we're doing with Comic Conversation is trying to um, change that. Um, that. This is especially true for a lot of uh, self-publishing efforts currently. Um, that's getting more and more common these days with um, the way that uh, the book industry is going in that um, it is a bit of a struggle these days since uh, well, COVID-19 is one thing. And secondly, there's just so much competition uh, for books and so publishers are being very conservative with their choices. Maybe we should go back into that. So what is Comic Conversation and how did it start? Okay, so um, well I was developing I think some pretty significant graphic novel collections at Ashfield Library and I thought um, like a Comic Con might be a good way to let people know that libraries held graphic novel collections. I went into some comic stores and the people reading their graphic novels weren't the sort of people that were coming into my library. So I wanted to capture that market. Um, so I got the go ahead to create an event. And this was in 2014. And I didn't really know where to start with it. So I went into King's Comics and met the wonderful Stephen Ford, who just happened to be in the store. And he was talking with us and he was sort of sussing us out to see how serious we were. And he suggested that I go to Comic Gong, which was just on in a few weeks. So I went down to Comic Gong and I met lots of comic creators and sort of found out what was happening in the comics world. 
Um, and then I went back to Sydney and sort of had lots of connections now, met um, Alex uh, Hammond from the Sydney Comics Guild, we sort of were working with her as well. And yeah, so I put together an event, um, started a Facebook page and kind of, yeah, it went on for a few years. So it's been, and it was, it was basically started to promote graphic novel collections in libraries was the concept. So uh, actually, so, so that started as a one day event uh, at that yes, uh, library, is that right? A, yes, yes, it was an evening event and it was aimed at an adult market. So we had uh, children's graphic novels and youth graphic novels for a while. But when I started really looking into graphic novels, I got very excited about the adult graphic novels. And I think my challenge through all of Comic Conversation was promoting it as an adult event. So every time a marketing person got onto it or it made it into the local newspaper, it was like, superheroes come to Ashwood yeah. Library. And it's like, no, that is not what I'm doing. I'm trying to um, create a world where comic creators come into the library. We have graphic novels. People come into the library and then there's this mingling and talking amongst creators and the public. and discovering how wonderful all these um, graphic novels are. They're not just for children, they're not just for slow readers, they're not, you know, a lower form of literature. They're actually these amazing works and there's a whole depth and breadth of world of them. And um, yeah, but I just, I really did have this struggle that um, they were superheroes and they were for children. So. I, I think I was making inroads into that, but it's a bit of a struggle with the concept. Yeah. It, it, it is hard, it is hard. Uh, and I've had those kind of conversations all the time as well. Yeah. Now, uh, comic conversation, uh, for me, when I, when I found out about it, uh, I saw that it was a huge success. It actually grew from that little evening that you said Yes. Into something much bigger. So you, you want to talk a little bit about the success and and sure. Okay, so yeah, the first event um was really nice. Uh, we held it in the library, actual in the library spaces. Um, you know, Pat Grant did a workshop, Bruce Mutar did a workshop. We had all these amazing I had 25 comic creators came on board on board the first year. Like I knew nobody, I knew nothing. And I think the first event, you know, Chewy Chan, um, Chris Sakira, uh, Marcelo Baez, all these amazing people came. Um, it was, I think I can say the first year was a hit. Um, all the workshops were full, the panel sessions were full. It was, um, people were flowing through the artist alley. It was really lovely. So after that finished, I thought, oh, maybe I could roll it out to a few other libraries. So actually did some um, like cooperative purchasing of graphic novels with some other libraries. So I just sort of floated the idea past them thinking, oh, they might think it's a bit crazy, but immediately everybody just wanted to come on board with it. So the second year I had six libraries um, and over the five years it developed, I had, there were over 20 public libraries with a week long um, comic arts festival, there were comic art exhibitions, um, family days, family festival days, workshops, panel sessions across a whole week, across 20 libraries in Sydney. So it was all very exciting and a lot of work. But I do have to say um, that it wasn't always a big success, that it was hit and miss over the years. Uh, we really learnt what worked and what didn't work, but I think there was enough kind of energy and motivation and interest to keep it going from year to year. But I have to say, you know, some years it clashed with other major events and not many people turned up or, uh, you know, we didn't quite get the marketing right. And, you know, it's, it's hitting, trying to get into the traditional comic reader market and to bring them into a library which um, like the people that maybe go to a comic con or to a comic store don't normally think of libraries as maybe that cool place to come and that we've got lots of graphic novels that they can borrow 
But I do think with the Ashfield event at with Comic Conversation, it did turn a, a, a public library space into kind of this cool um, evening. You know, it was a wine, nibble, cheese, um, lots of comic creators, lots of very interesting art. It just, um, and I really liked having live music at the event as well. And it just kind of created a different space in the library, which was really lovely. You know, people walking around with wine and cheese, talking to comic creators, mingling in with the collections. It was just a really, you know, buzzy, lovely atmosphere. So I think, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and in panel sessions, you know, all these kind of interested people talking with comic creators and having an interaction. So yeah, it was all about the conversation between the public and the comic creators, which is what I was trying to achieve. Um, um, unfortunately, I was, I was never able to, to go and visit the festival. Yeah, I was waiting you know, for you to come. <laughs> I know, yeah, but it, 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 sounds, it sounds really amazing. And I think you, you created something pretty special. Now, uh, Queenie, maybe you can tell us about uh, the festival success or, or, you know, or, or how did you see it from the creator's perspective? <laughs> What, it did, what did it mean to creators to have a library festival like this? I, I, will, I will say Queenie came on in year two from Comic Conversation and has been like a total supporter ever since. So. Yes, um, I kind of randomly rolled into the festival when I think it was Alex from the Sydney Comics Guild who yes. um, emailed me about and I had no idea such a thing was happening in libraries. That happens a lot with me. Uh, people actually have to tell me something's happening. I'm not that great at tapping into the um, what's trendy at the moment. But I think that kind of um, made me sit up and take notice because uh, I think Australia might be a little bit behind other countries when it comes to, um, you know, getting comics into libraries, like grasping the visual culture, the highly visualized culture that we live in today. And uh, of course, it was great to see the Australian libraries, you know, getting onto the bandwagon that um, other libraries um, internationally has gotten into. Um, years ago. So um, I was thrilled to hear that Australian um, libraries were collecting Australian graphic novels and having an interest in developing their uh, collection. I thought that was a, a absolutely the, the greatest thing I've heard all decade, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, because I think even now, after Comic Conversation, after, you know, having enough people talk about it in the community and it should be widely known as um, something that exists. I think there is still a perception that libraries tend to deal only in prose fiction or in um, pro prose only. And libraries are not really considered visual spaces or technological spaces, which is a real shame because that's not true. You know, so I think um, even while people are, are very happy to go to any kind of free library event that they're interested in, I think the perception of libraries being kind of um, um, for, dead tree books only, or that kind of thing, um, or for children's picture books or something. You know, that kind of attitude, it still takes a little bit of time to change. Mm. And so I think that's the thing with Comic Conversation is that um, it's still a growing kind of um, festival. It's still changing and evolving and seeing what works and what doesn't and seeing how you could bring people back year after year. So I like the um, Artist Alley aspect of it because obviously it wouldn't be a Comic Conversation without something like that. Um, but I do see that um, it ha still has a lot of potential to evolve, uh, to evolve and um, bring in a whole lot of um, different kinds of creators as well, you know, as a way to expand the festival, but also as a way to change people's perceptions of libraries. And this might be more of a problem in schools than it is a problem in uh, libraries, because I think librarians, are, them being very open minded, but uh, I think some school administrators are still a little bit, you know, snobby on the whole comics thing in that they don't necessarily approve. But uh, that's changing because the Australian education curriculum is uh, putting visual literacy at, uh, an, as an important thing in classrooms. And uh, that is an important, very important skill for the 21st century if you're going to um, educate people, particularly the young, about how to navigate the world that we, that we live in now. So uh, hopefully these kinds of um, kind of initiatives from the education department and also from libraries will uh, change perception in the public. Because while comics these days are super popular with kids, I mean, there is no problem with children coming into libraries and reading all the, you know, kid-related graphic novels 
available on the shelves. I think their parents are a bit, uh, you know, they're like, is that, uh, should my kid be reading comics constantly? It's like, that is their attitude. It's like, shouldn't you be reading Pride mm-hmm. and Prejudice or something, which is a great book, by the way, but, you know, uh, not everyone's into that. And um, there is still some pushback from parents as well as to the educational value of comics. But, and that attitude will also take a little bit of time to, uh, you know, change. Yeah, look, uh, uh, my, my background actually before I came to libraries is in media studies and education. So I was also a teacher for, for a while. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, yeah, definitely like uh, visual literacy and multiple literacies as well and are incredibly important uh, nowadays and uh, increasingly more and <laughs> more. And, and comics are the perfect medium um, for that. So I think things are changing, but it is, uh, it is really hard to drive that kind of change. There is a still uh, quite a bit of resistance uh, from some teachers, from parents, from uh, you know, the education department and things like that. But it, it, it is changing, definitely. And I guess that's one of the things uh, that uh, at Alia Graphic we want to do as well. I'm really passionate about this, you know, and, and about literacy and comics and literacy for me are, uh, you know, I, I actually often say, and people are probably sick and tired of hearing this from me, but, you know, uh, I think that comics have um, multiple literacy superpowers. They really do. <laughs> and, and, and we need to... We need to drive that message home, uh, for especially for parents and for teachers and other librarians as well. Like I've encountered librarians as well who, who have some pretty negative views about comics, and, but but that's changing. So so that that's kind of the thing that one of the things that we really want to do at Alia Graphic as well. So um, I think maybe we should go back to uh, um, libraries and Australian comics. So some of the issues that uh, you mentioned before, uh, Queenie, are that um, it's a small industry, uh, uh, the publishers don't take risks uh, here very often. Uh, and and the, in, in, in Australia, I've noticed also that there are lots of independent titles uh, published. Uh, so they often go under the radar uh, and often also those books uh, kind of be found on library suppliers. And that's, that's also an issue because um, libraries uh, usually buy most of their books through library suppliers. So um, I guess maybe if I could uh, put this one to Karen, what's the criteria to add titles to libraries? Uh, what, what what do libraries, okay. how do libraries get books and, you know, what are the kind of things that they're looking for, I guess? Okay, and um, I would like to make a really strong argument that for graphic novels, the criteria are basically the same as for all our other core collections. So... What librarians look for, we look for titles that are reviewed in popular press, we like bestsellers, we like award winners by well-known or respected authors and publishers, uh, popular culture tie-ins, movie tie-ins, TV series tie-ins. We want quality works by emerging and local authors. So that's what I look for across, um, you know, fiction and non-fiction. I would say basically, that is the same for graphic novels as well. Um, so um, I guess working with library suppliers, uh, like I'm an out, mainly an outsourced library collection service. So that means that I profile my collection and uh, library suppliers will purchase for me to that profile. But I will also say that for um, some smaller collections like our graphic novels, there is an opportunity to go to local bookstores and to talk to um, experts. So for staff that work at Kinna Kinnear or King's Comics, um, you know, graphic novels are like, I think through library suppliers, you can get, you can do a standing order for a series and a standing order for authors. 
But I think to really build some depth and quality in the collection, you need to go and talk to some experts as well. Interestingly, I formed um, a connection with Bookshop Darlinghurst in Sydney, which is um, an LGBTIQ uh, bookshop specialist, but he is really helping me select some LGBTIQ manga and graphic novels that I don't think I would be able to get through more mainstream suppliers. And he just emails me every time he finds something really interesting. So it's making those connections and trying to find where you can build really great collections through. Yeah, that, that, that's a really good point. Uh, uh, I, that's one thing that uh, I've had a lot of discussions about, you know, that uh, we tend to focus so much on library suppliers and there's always kind of in, every library is different, but in most libraries I've encountered mm -hmm. that there's this kind of push up. No, you, you need to get it through the library supplier. And that's great. But at the same time, I've, I've always pushed against that and said, you know, we also mm -hmm. need to be talking to our local experts and that's the local comic store, you know, because they know what people are reading here in terms of comics and they're the experts. They live and breathe this. So, uh, you know, if, if we have a conversation with them, they'll also be able to tell us all the titles, you know, and uh, they also have, um, they also have this kind of knowledge as well about, you know, what's being published here as well, you know. So it's really important to have that kind of partnership as well. Yeah, definitely. Mm. <laughs> but um, also with council libraries, <clears throat> our procurement policies, sometimes libraries do find it difficult to work with local bookstores and purchasing off, um, you know, like a local comic creator. So that is a hindrance for some libraries building interesting collections. So I think, yeah, it depends on the council that you work for. So hopefully we can be a bit more flexible or um, with the work Queenie is doing, helping um, comic creators get into the more established library suppliers, it's much easier for us to purchase with procurement policies. Yeah. So. Uh Actually, I think we should talk about that. So, you know, some of the mm -hmm. um, so some of the main library suppliers in Australia are like ALS Library Services, James Bennett, uh, DLS, Peter Powell. Um, so maybe um, what maybe Quinny can talk about that, and you know, what's kind of the criteria and how do they add titles to their catalogs. As a creator, how do you get your book? And if I'm an independent creator, how do I get my book into those library suppliers so that hopefully libraries can also mm -hmm. get them? It's actually very easy. <laughs> the thing about James Bennett and the ALS is that they've been very open to self-publishers for a long time, at least several years. And that is because like you wouldn't expect library suppliers to be so open to um, um, uh, self-publishers, but the truth is the book industry has changed a lot and a lot of self-published books are selling a lot more than published books, like books from big publishers. And that's just like, well, what, what do you can say whatever you want about that? But that's the truth and it's been happening ever since um, Amazon started their ebook program and allowed normal people to sell their ebooks to anybody who wants to read it. So I think some of the more established um, library suppliers, um, understand that and so um, it's just a matter of contacting them them through their website and giving them the information they need to add you to their database so the websites of um, James Bennett and ALS they both have um, tabs for self publishers who want to um, submit their book to the ALS and James um, Bennett and they just collect your data and they stick it in the database so if any library just wants a particular book, they'll just say, I want this book by blah, blah, blah. And they'll give it them ISBN and they'll be able to look into their database to see whether it's available. And that's about it. Um, I was surprised to hear about that. I expected at least to be some kind of a screening process and said, you can't put in, you know, go into our database unless we've had a read of your book and consider yourself worthy. But um, the truth is a lot of libraries hire people for workshops these days. And um, a lot of these people do self-publish books on the side, not, nothing to do with comics sometimes or prose fiction. Sometimes it is just self-help books or even um, cookbooks. 
um, photograph collections, anything like that. A lot of people self-publish these days uh, for these books and libraries when they get these people in to do workshops or talks or some kind of serious thing they're doing. Um, they also need these books by these people in the libraries. So you can say, okay, we, we have this is our speaker and this is their book and you can borrow it from, it's gonna be here on the shelf and check it out sometime. So it is something that makes it um, a lot easier for libraries to do that. Yes, so um, I do recommend if anybody has a comic or graphic novel that has an ISBN to list their book with these libraries, our suppliers. So um, it's just an extra step. It's like cataloging with the um, Australian, um, uh, the little Australian National Library, you know, that kind of behavior to let people know that I have published a book this year and it's what, this is what it's about, this is the cover, and like the process of get, actually designating an ISBN for your book, it's just part of uh, the whole, whole existing infrastructure for books. Yes, um, so part of what I do is to let people know about this, but it's been a bit of an uphill battle because a lot of um, creators these days uh, still don't really publish with ISBNs. So for comics, like I said before, um, half of the internet is made of comics and most people, when they start uh, publishing their, and creating their own comic, their first avenue of publishing tends to be web comics. And so they start doing their thing and putting it online and they, a lot of people gain an audience entirely through this way and web comics these days make a lot of money as well if you're popular. You know, so some people just skip the publishing step and go straight to web comics, which unfortunately isn't something that libraries can buy from a library supplier, obviously, because these tend to be available for free online. And so a lot of people find success through that and they just don't look at any other avenue, Australians included. Um, others are just getting started and those that want to go the convention route typically tend to have a book of some kind in hand, but they may not have an ISBN because if they think they're just gonna sell through conventions and a lot of them do that, and sometimes the size of the book is only 24 pages, which really isn't worth getting an ISBN for, it's too short. Yeah, in situations like that, then um, they also um, don't bother with an ISBN or if they want to publish in a serialized fiction fashion, which they probably would go for an ISSN, so a magazine or a serialized periodical kind of um, uh, thing rather than going straight for the book ISBN. And so there is that problem when it comes to local comics is that only a fraction of people producing work in this market actually uses an ISBN. So that does make the job of uh, libraries trying to collect uh, the work of local creators uh, that much more difficult. But um, I'm glad that Ali is making an effort to document all the Australian uh, comic creators out there because uh, obviously you have to include people who are political cartoonists as well and people who are very popular web cartoonists which exist entirely outside the library system. Yes, yeah, so uh, of course, uh, comic book uh, artists also occasionally work as illustrators or video game creators and things like that or musicians. And, and so it's, it's, it's an interesting kind of a, an evolving field. And hopefully the information that I'm putting out there would actually, um, you know, galvanize more local creators to look at their work and how they, how they produce the final product and how they put that together and consider how they might get that into the library and or school system. Okay, so just in summary, so, um, you know, for creators, I guess, you know, it's really important to have uh, the ISBN. Uh, mm -hmm. number which in Australia it's managed through Thor Balka. Thor Balka. You can uh, you can have a look uh, there uh, you know um, we also uh, like perfect binding uh, and how back kind of books so no mm -hmm. not floppies uh, you know yes. um, and it really helps with libraries if you have them with library suppliers because a lot of public libraries have those kind of limitations about where they can buy and it's really important for creators also to have that, um, uh, the legal deposit. So, you know, submitted mm -hmm. to the National Library Australia. Um, so I guess, uh, you know, and as Queenie said, you know, uh, you can check the library suppliers, their websites, contact them. And um, it, I've never done it, but she says it's easy. I believe her. So that's great. Um, we actually, uh, we actually uh, thinking at Dahlia Graphic, and we'll see if we can do this, but we're, we're thinking and we're hoping that we can get a, a webinar or some sort of conversation like this with uh, a couple of library suppliers uh, uh, about comics and, and, and you know, for uh, Australian creators as well. So we'll, we'll see if that goes ahead, but um, we're hoping that will happen. But uh, um, that's a fantastic idea. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I tried to do something like that with Comic mm -hmm. Conversation, never got around to it. So I really love that idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We yeah. hope it goes ahead. Yeah. Yes. So, I think um, with like. Yeah. I think with library suppliers, they're always happy to kind of talk to people about what they're looking for and how to get their works involved. Um, I think the biggest, uh, a bigger problem would be um, that, that hopefully we can solve is actually letting libraries know about Australian graphic novels. Because I know that there are some demand out there for Australian graphic novels to fill in some libraries collections, but uh, a lot of people don't really know how to get yeah. their hands on, um, um, on that in libraries. Mm -hmm. um, they may ask, um, the, the library supplies and the library supplies may not always be sure about which book in their collection is actually a graphic novel. Yeah, so, uh, or at least this is an Australian graphic novel and uh, they may not know all that much about um, what genre something is or whether it's uh, suited for whatever the librarian is looking for. Because people out there, like I said, is interested in locally produced work, but they lack the, uh, um, the know-how to get their hands on it. And there is no local framework or infrastructure to actually uh, let people know about the existence of such things. And so I think um, there's a real lack of information in, in within the Australian comics uh, industry to yeah. educate the public about what it is they do. And what uh, does exist tends to, be a, tends to be a little scattershot, as yeah. in uh, people doing things in their own little corner. Yeah, so that, that's another thing that we're trying to tackle. So um, obviously, um, we're really committed uh, about uh, promoting Australian titles and creators at Alia Graphic, and we really want to push that. Uh, uh, something that uh, Comic Conversations did really well, and I really like, is a Comic Conversation buy list that you guys put together. Uh, uh, so if you want to talk about that, either of you, um, Maybe Queenie, because I think you're you're the most involved in this. You know, uh, what, what was this buy list in the past? Mm -hmm. How did it come about? Um, okay, so the Comic Conversation book list for uh, libraries to buy of Australian graphic novels was something that I started because uh, when I started working with uh, Australian libraries and, well, and and Karen over the Comic Conversation um, festival. Librarians were complaining that they had these uh, comic book artists coming to do their workshops and do talks and things, but they don't know how to get their books in to the libraries because uh, originally the librarians were actively buying books directly off the creators, but because libraries can't do their own cataloging, they have to fill in a crap ton of paperwork to actually send it and pay money shipping to send it to the library supplier and then have it wrapped and catalogued and then sending it back. And that takes a long time. It actually costs more than the book itself to do that. And uh, it is just a lot of work for something that uh, could, could be done in, an, in a better way. So I thought, um, okay, so my first Comic Conversation booklet was really just a bunch of books created by local creators so that the librarians involved, and that was a number of them from different libraries, could actually have an idea of what was out there. And that was all that is. And uh, uh, eventually the list started to improve after year after year when I realized what the problems were. So I started asking creators to list their books with James Bennett and ALS before they submit to my list. And um, so that, that was probably something that kind of boosted the list a bit. And at the time I decided to uh, publicize it by uh, making a flyer, a printed flyer out of it and um, distributing it both um, in real life through the ALS and um, also through um, uh, emails, I guess, emailing the PDF to various librarians, both of which I think are very limited ways of letting people know what the list is and what it does and why it exists and what you're supposed to do with it. So um, that was how the, the uh, list came to be and how it came to evolve. And this year I decided to do something very different with the list, which hopefully would make it a much more accessible um, kind of a, a um, thing for people to look up if they want to know more about uh, Australian comics and in libraries in particular. Okay, so that's, yeah. Uh, this year, V2020 is gonna be very different. <laughs> so so uh, maybe this is a good time for, for you to share. So uh, what's, what, how has it evolved? What's the comic conversation by list um, now? Okay, how so has it changed? I'm what is it now? Uh, I'm going to share a screen and show you what it is um, yeah. soon. I'll explain what it is first. 
first of all, it's um, now being turned into a full-on Australian comics database. And one of the reasons for that is because um, I, well, I'm, I'm pretty good at doing, doing databases, so this wasn't particularly difficult for me. But I found when I was compiling the CCB20 list for this year, is that um, in, I'm getting more and more entries on the book, uh, on, the, on the list. And part of the reason was because of the um, earlier interest in promoting graphic novels. So, um, you know, your, your group has actually, um, was part of what motivated this because uh, I would go to the Alia blog spot um, about graphic novels and check the, the list down thinking, oh my God, there's a whole bunch of books that I need to have on my list that I missed. And so uh, the entries, number of entries grew from 24 to 31. And I'm thinking that with the popularity of comics in general, this list will only grow. And I can imagine next year it being 50 entries. And I'm having, I'm starting to have trouble sorting through all of it. And I thought um, there should also be a kind of a, a database that keeps these books recorded and um, can find ways that you could sort through and search through it and have um, information that can be kept. Because the thing about the Alia blog is that it is meant to be up to date. And so certain entries have to be removed after a certain amount of time. And so I thought if there was a way to preserve all these Australian um, comics and just have some kind of easy resource that anyone can access at any time, then um, that is what I should do. So this is the um, front page of the list. And I've got, um, so it tells you what the database is. And here's a list of all the um, Australian comics that has been submitted to the CCB list over the years, including some that haven't, but which I've submitted to this year. So it's actually got about a hundred and something entries so far. Yep, and uh, I've especially curated the CCB list under this tag. And so this year's um, CCB book list is here. Hang on, let me just click on that. Yeah, so this is um, this year's CCB list. And because of the length of the list, I've had to split it into two lists, into a main list and a secondary list. So the main list is what I think is probably um, um, what people should be paying attention to. And while the rest is uh, tends to be books from mainstream publishers, interestingly enough, because um, I've always felt that the goal of the CCB list was to promote works that are less well known. Um, and so that includes independently published work, works by small press publishers, works by smaller overseas publishers and things like that. So um, for this year's list, it is now a full on um, database, <laughs> actually, that is uh, searchable through. So uh, it is possible to do searches through titles on the, on the website. So you could perhaps search for a title, say super, 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 super. See if anything comes up. So yes, here it would be a um, list of titles that have the word super in them. And uh, you can also search for it through titles like creators, age group and genre and ISBN. Yep, so um, the, the search functions are available. They can be expanded to do an advanced search where you can do a much more detailed search on this. So I felt that this is a good way to, um, as, as a kind of service to your Australian comic book industry and uh, to encourage more people to uh, submit their book to the website. So if someone has an, a book with an ISBN, then they could um, submit the book here and fill this form in and then submit. And then uh, you can actually have your book listed on this website as well. And so hopefully that would be a, uh, a very good thing for the local community in that uh, it can be all done online and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, whether anyone can see your book. So for people who want to uh, okay, say, want to click more uh, and know more about a particular book. Uh, we have a particular page for each of these books that you can click on and you could uh, see the title, who made it, um, description of the book, that's very important, um, any reviews from it. And uh, of course, um, ISBN, publisher stuff, uh, teaching resources if there's any. And I've also made space for three preview pages that uh, you could um, add to your book entry. So hopefully creators will be um, listing their book on the website and posting some samples of the artwork inside. So at least people um, looking at a particular entry would be able to get a grasp of what they think that this thing is about. Yeah, so hopefully uh, this would be um, very useful for libraries and schools when they're trying to find books to teach for, um, uh, or to just to fill their shelves with.
And the good thing about the database is that it does allow me to pull a lot of entries based on certain criteria. For example, I made a little spot, especially for the Indigenous creators that I know of who have submitted books to the list. And uh, so this, right now we have a four books by Australian creators, mostly by Brent e. McKenna and Sutu. And I'm sure there's more. So hopefully um, yeah. if there were more books from this group in that um, people would um, just use the contact form to contact the website and let them know that, so, hey, I'm an Indigenous Australian creator as well, or my book added to this particular list. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that I would just add their name, you know, in um, yeah. the database call when I do that. So this is actually a very, very uh, flexible and fantastic kind of uh, setup. Yeah. yeah. And one for the Ledger Awards as well, which is the um, Industry Awards for Australian Comics. And so I've made a list of all the winners and shortlisted books for, that have um, been on the, the, the award list here. So uh, hopefully that would be useful for people who want to look at uh, award-winning works. Yeah, especially for libraries and schools, because obviously that matters a lot. When uh, that yeah. the idea that a, a work has uh, won an award and thus is a mark of quality. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the uh, domain name for this is uh, ozcomicsdb.com. Yeah. yeah. And the website isn't exactly up and running yet because I was hoping before we do a formal launch for all the creators from the CCB uh, in past years would be able to. Um, pop in and kind of at least look over their entries for their books and add some preview pages to that and uh, make some changes and add review quotes, things like that. Yeah, so uh, we're hoping for a soft launch in early August. Yes, to introduce this um, this uh, system, I guess, to the public and to uh, libraries and schools and that they would hopefully find this a useful resource. And also to uh, book buyers for schools. Uh, I do work with Scholastic and um, on getting um, Australian creators um, and their comics into libraries. And this being schools, they have very, very strict criteria. I mean, I managed to get my works in because uh, I do the uh, uh, kind of non-fiction stories about historical queens, which is like bang for, the, um, for that particular kind of market. But um, if you're talking about fiction works, which is in, in higher demand for that market, um, mm. and a lot of Australian um, school suppliers have trouble sourcing the right kind of material for schools. So hopefully this list will actually give them a, a good way to try and figure out who is doing what in the local um, industry and see if they can contact them and get something going with, if they find a work that they think is suitable for schools. Yeah. I think um, I think this is going to be excellent uh, for libraries and librarians. Uh, I really like that you can search um, the titles in different ways, and also you know through uh, who are the um, Ledger Award winners or you know um, the Orealis as well, which is another award. Uh, and and you know you you can look in different ways. I, I love that uh, creators can add the titles as well. And um, of course, there's gonna be, um, there's gonna be some support from us as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. we're gonna have some librarians um, supporting this as well, the database and in managing it. But um, yeah, so soft launch, uh, hopefully in August. And, and uh, this is more or less when this um, uh, will be uh, coming out as well. Uh, so perfect timing. Uh, yeah, um, so excellent. Uh, th this is really good. I think it's gonna be really, really useful. And uh, it's really coming together really nicely, I think. Uh, any thoughts on this, yeah, Karen? I, yeah, I really agree. I think this will be fantastic for like libraries like mine that are outsourced. We can just point our library supplier to this website and just say, I want all the graphic novels that are listed in the main category. I want all the graphic novels listed under Indigenous creators. So it's really easy for profiling, which I really love. So that will really, really help libraries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hopefully the um, connection with Alia graphic novels that we have is that um, uh, the graphic novel group run by Yerji is that uh, hopefully librarians would offer their suggestions for uh, what kind of searches they want to see done because mm -hmm. some of these have to be manually done. Because for example, the indigenous creators, I have to create a list of known creators who are like uh, indigenous to be able to make that database call. And uh, so if they are interested, like a librarian, like if Karen, you're interested in getting um, 
all female creators who write books about superheroes, you know, that can be done with this database. Uh, you just have to yeah, uh, ask for it. And then I could create a special page with that specific um, need that you have. And so hopefully that would help teachers and librarians uh, find books that are otherwise would be difficult you know, to, to, to like, where, what do I do? It's like, okay, we have this database. Yeah, we have enough right. information for you to make these searches. So just tell me and I could do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, fantastic, uh, because like we're really... Uh, yeah. yeah, I was trying to have female creators. Yeah, we're really... You could have another list. Excellent. Yes, yeah. yes, I am creating a... Uh, you can see this uh, particular empty spot right now. I'm creating one for female creators. So that would be there. And it would include female writers as well. Um, something, particularly a lot of female writers who come from outside of comics. Uh, I know Isabel Carmody has a book on this list because she wrote a book called... I don't Never know. More. Name escapes me. Yeah. Yes, uh, Hollow. Never more. I don't know. But uh, anyway, um, a lot of people may not be aware that a name as big as Isabel Carmody actually has a comic available. Mm. You know, they're they're like what? <laughs> but it, but a number of well known um, Australian writers, sometimes female, sometimes not, do have have written for comics. Mm. And I'm also hoping to include a um, feature for probably magazine as well. Uh, because there are well-known, especially for teacher librarians who really struggle with the lack of, uh, with the need to teach comics in schools, but without the right kind of material sometimes, or have no idea where to find them, uh, or have no idea what the age group is. Uh, their school magazine, they have comics in them. And uh, also a, a magazine that I work for called Cookie, they also publish comics as well. So uh, letting people know that, yeah, believe me, um, a lot of uh, magazine producers out there knows that kids love comics and they've been publishing comics for years. Sometimes uh, a school library, um, school teachers just don't know about them, you know, so uh, making people aware that, hey, you know, here are some Australian creators that may not be in a book format, but hey, uh, magazines could be great for schools as well at times, depending on what it is about if they don't already order uh, the, the a magazine. In. So that's a um, kind of a possible uh, avenue as well. That's great. Um, Karen, I think I interrupted you before. Sorry. <laughs> Can That's you remember okay. what you were going to say? I was just going to say that, um, particularly in my library at the moment, we're really looking for diversity and inclusiveness in our collections. Um, so, yeah, things like women and Indigenous creators, you know, those sort of comment, uh, concepts are just exactly what we're looking for. Um, yeah, I think, you know, we don't just want, you know, white male um, writers, you know, so the more diversity that you can bring out is really fantastic. And I think we've spoken before about graphic novels. I think a few years ago, it was very male dominated. And, you know, we just want more interesting, diverse elements in our collection. So I yeah. really love if we could explore that further. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Definitely. Well, I, I think that's a good place to end uh, so I really, really want to thank um, both of you uh, for uh, joining me today and sharing all this because uh, um, I, I think these uh, kind of initiatives comic conversation and you know the this comic database that has come out of, of that as well you know um, uh, really gonna make a big difference and there's definitely people talking about it people noticing also Alia graphic and, uh, and the kind of things that we're sharing as well. Uh, so um, uh, I, I think, I think it's, it's a turning point at the moment. And, uh, you know, and I was, the inspiration to start Alia graphic was, uh, as many know, uh, the American graphic novels and uh, comics round table, but also comic conversation. I mean, uh, Karen, when was the first time that I contacted you? I think you was probably four yes. years ago. It was a long time ago, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was probably yeah, four years so ago we've been that talking. I heard about it and thought, what? That's great. They're doing this kind of festival. I need to talk to this person. Well, yeah, and thanks for all your support and for all the work you're doing now. It's um, yeah, it's really inspiring. I think it's really a good time for graphic novels and libraries. This, this is, um, it's going to blow up. It's great. I think we feed off each other and that's a good thing. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, 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 it's a small world, comics as well, isn't it? Well, small and big. <laughs> the more you get into it, the more you discover. But yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think we'll leave it here. Uh, thank you for joining me. And uh, this will come out as a video on our YouTube channel, but uh, it will also come out as a podcast. So if you search, especially on Apple Podcasts, um, although it may be in some other places as well, but we, that's where we put it. Apple Podcasts, um, Alia Graphic Novels and Comics, we have a podcast as well. Uh, for those people who just want to listen in the car uh, and not want to watch a video. Uh, and also, we are looking for members as well. So if you're uh, a library worker, um, school library, public library, academic libraries as well, we want to be inclusive and we want to hear from librarians who work in different fields, you know, and dedicated to comics or interested in comics, uh, contact us, Oslib Comics, uh, Oslib Comics with X at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, we, we are interested in people who want to help with, you know, collections and the kind of lists and things like that that we do. Uh, but also in doing this kind of thing as well, I don't want to be always the, the same, um, you know, presenting this. I, I would uh, rather have other voices as well, uh, representing Alia Graphics. So uh, thank you, Karen, and thank you, Queenie. Thank you so much for organising. It's been fun. Yeah. Thank you for um, making this uh, talk available yeah, and for getting this out there. And we'll keep talking, I'm sure. <laughs>